Hello everybody, welcome to the algorithm course. In this video, I'm going to discuss the Sentinel linear search process. So there are a number of steps to follow. Let us go through all the steps first. First, we have to save the final element of the array first. And then we can replace the final element with the target element. And in this case, the final element would become the Sentinel. And then we can set the current index to zero. And then we start from the first index of a list, which is the index zero. And we can see if this element corresponding to that first index is equal to the target or not. If this element does not equal the target, we need to increase the current index by one. Else, if the element equals the target, we just stop the increment of the index. By combining step six and step seven, the current index that we stop would be between 0 and the length minus 1. At this stage, we can replace the final element with the original one that we saved early. And we can check this condition. If the current index is less than the length minus 1, or if the final element equals the target, then we say that the element is really found. Otherwise, we say that the element is not found. So what is the advantage of using the Sentinel linear search process? In doing this process, the index must be able to stop before the final element because we already set the final element as the target. So in order to find out the target, the index must be able to stop in the array. In this case, we do not need to check whether the index is out of bounds or not because we must be sure that the index must be within the array. That means we can save the time that is used to compare the index with the bounds. That means we don't need to check whether the index will go larger than the length of the array. Now let's take a look at this case. We can see that the target can be found before the final element of the array. So let us go through this algorithm for this situation. The length of the array is 5 and we want to find out whether the target, which is number 2, is inside the array or not. And we know that the final element is 3. That's why we can save number 3 to the final variable. And the next step is to replace the final element with the target. So now you can see that the final element of the array has turned to the target element, which is number 2. And then we can go to the process of incrementing the index. The starting index is 0, and we want to see whether the first element of the array, which is index 0, would give me a value that is equal to the target. So we see that the current element isn't equal to the target because number 4 is not equal to number 2. So we are sure that the target is not found, and then we can go to increment the index. Now the index is incremented to 1 and we want to check whether index 1 would give me an element that is equal to the target. So now number 5 is not equal to number 2. That means the current element is not equal to the target. We are sure that the element is not found yet. In this case, we just incremented the index. Now the index is incremented to 2, and we want to check whether index number 2 would correspond to the target element. And we can see that for now, um, the current element isn't equal to the target because 1 is not equal to 2. We are sure that the element is not found yet, and we want to increment the index again. Now the index is incremented to 3, and we want to check whether the element corresponding to index 3 is equal to the target. And now we see that the current element is equal to the target because we find that 2 is equal to 2. So at this stage, we can say that an element matches with the target. When we find an element that is able to match with the target, we replace the final element with the original one. So the original one was number 3, and I want to put that number 3 back to the final element of the array so that I can get back my original array. And now we can check the situation. The index that has stopped is actually smaller than the length minus 1. We know the length is 5, so the length minus 1 is just 4, and the index is 3, so we have 3 that is 
smaller than four, and if this condition is satisfied, we say that the target is found in the array and the search is complete. Now let's take a look at another situation. The situation is, is like this. The target is actually the final element of the array. Of course, we still have the same array with length 5. The first step is to save the final element, so number 3 will be saved in the final variable. And then we start with index 0, and then we go to the first element, which is number 4, and I want to compare number 4 with the target, which is number 3. And now we see that the current element isn't equal to the target, so number 4 is not equal to number 3. And we just want to increment the index again, because we are sure that the element cannot be found right now. Now the index is changed to 1, and we want to see whether index 1, which is number 5, is equal to the target, which is number 3. So we can see that the current element isn't equal to the target yet. 5 is not equal to 3, so we are sure that the element is not found yet. Now we just want to increment the index again. Now the element index would become 2, and index number 2 corresponds to number 1 on the array. And is number 1 equal to the target, which is number 3? Of course not. So the current element isn't equal to the target, and we say that 1 is not equal to 3. So we are sure that the element is not found yet. We just increase the index by 1 again. Now the index is increased to 3. Is the element with index 3 equals the target, which is number 3? Of course not, because we see that the current element is number 2, but the target is number 3. So 2 is not equal to 3. We haven't found the target yet. So we just increment the index again. Now we increase the index to number 4. So for index number 4, the element is number 3, and the target is also number 3. So in this situation, we can say that the current element is equal to the target. And we can say that an element really matches with the target now. At this stage, we just replace the final element with the original one. So the original element is number 3. And I put that number 3 back to the original array, so that I can retrieve back the original array before the increment of the index. And in this situation, we see that the final element equals the target element, because we see that number 3 is actually equal to 3. So if this condition is met, we say that the target is really found, and the search is complete. Now let's take a look at another situation. The target is not in the array, so what would happen with the algorithm? Let us see. Now the length of the array is still 5. The first step is to save the final element, that's why I have number 3 being the final variable. And then we replace the final element with the target, so the final element of the array becomes number 6. Now we start with index 0. And for index 0, the element would correspond to number 4. So does number 4 equal the target, which is number 6? Of course not. The current element isn't equal to the target, as 4 isn't equal to 6. So we are sure that the element is not found yet. We just need to increment the index right now. And after incrementing the index, we now have index equals 1. And the target is still number 6. So um, index 1 would correspond to element with 5 inside. So we see that the current element, which is number 5, isn't yet equal to the target, which is number 6. So we are sure that the element is not found yet. And in this case, we just increment the index. Now we go to index number 2 after the increment. So index number 2 corresponds to a value of 1. So does 1 equal 6? Of course not. That's why we are sure that the current element isn't equal to the target yet. And the element is not found yet. We need to increment the index further. Now the index is changed to number 3. So for index number 3, the value is 2. And does 2 equal 6? Of course not. That means the current element is still not equal to the target. In this case, we are sure that the element is not found yet. 
will lead to incremented index again. Now the index is equal to number four right now, and we can see that the current element, which is number six, is equal to the target, which is number six as well. So we can see that an element really matches with the target. That means number six on the array can be matched with the target right now. When we find an element that can match with the target, we just replace the final element with the original one. So the original final value would be number three. That's why I just put number three back to the array so that I can retrieve the original array. Now after the retrieval of the original array, we have to check for a compound condition. The index is now four and the length is five. That means the index is not smaller than length minus one. We have 4 being smaller than 4, which is false. And for the other condition, is the target equal to the final value? Of course not, because 6 being the target isn't equal to 3 being the final value. So you can see that both conditions are false. When I combine these two false conditions with an OR operator, I will still get false as the final result. So if I can get false, after the compound conditional statements, I'm sure that the element cannot be found in the array. And we just say that the element is not found and the search is now complete. Thank you for walking through the algorithm with me. If you have any questions about my video, please leave your questions at the comment section below the video. If you like this video, please give me a like and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.